Hey everyone, hopefully you're having a good day. Uh, my name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. Uh, there's a question, some questions on Twitter I wanna answer, just respond here, cause it's way easier and everybody gets to hear my response than trying to type this all out. So here's the question. Uh, this person forwarded to me, do you agree with her? Uh, this is an inflationary bear market. You will be punished if you are long stocks. Bonds are on the floor and equities are not a hedge for bonds. Equities will tank, then both bonds and equities will fall further. Bookmarked. And yeah, I mean, I agree with it. That's that's part of the thesis of, of my channel. Um, and again, it, it, the thesis isn't about it playing out. A thesis is a framework or a guideline to look at the markets through a certain paradigm. So the thesis, just to sum it up, is uh, the housing market and expansionary phase is provides liquidity into the system. That liquidity into the system is inflation, but there's also a credit cycle on the back of this as well that has a problem. So we're, we're nearing the end of a credit cycle, a big credit cycle, where um, you, you have inflation to pay off all of this debt that's out there. It has to expand. Another thing that's tied into this is an energy crisis. We are, we have we haven't made the necessary investments for the energy necessary to grow the economy. So again, looking at it through a ratio, so to speak, is you have to have some sort of balance between the economy, the GDP, and the growth there versus your money supply growth. If these get out of whack, that's where things have problems. And energy is a basically GDP is a direct conversion of energy. That is your, your, your size of your economy. Uh, you're going to have a very inflationary heavy uh, problem if your energy goes short and you can't build things. <clears throat> so now you've got way more money that must expand in order to service the debt and far less things to purchase. That, therefore, uh, is a ratio of how much money you have, the money supply in relationship to goods in the, in the economy. Uh, that is inflationary when measured through the consumer price index. So we're going into a bear market because energy is in a crisis. Why? Well, the GDP can't expand because you don't have enough energy. That's why energy is going up in price is because we don't have enough energy in relationship to how much money has been created, which is inflationary. So what I think Powell's trying to do is he's trying to raise the interest rates quick and fast to try to kill the housing market. Why is he trying to kill the housing market? Because that's where some of the liquidity is coming from. The majority of liquidity. And then the other one was from the stimulus that was created earlier. Will he be successful? We'll find out. I do think the housing market will slow down, definitely. But that doesn't mean that the thesis is broken. The thesis is a paradigm to measure where we, at, where we are at within this cycle. Now, there is a huge difference coming up now than what we have in other cycles. This isn't like 2007 or 8. Why? Because we don't have the inventory, at least not yet. Maybe it's 2004 or 5. Why is that a big deal to identify where that is? Because the entire bull market of uranium occurred from 05 to 07 in two years. We could have another two years where this housing market sticks together. And it, and it basically replenishes our inventory. Now, I don't think we're going to have a crash because you're going to have to have negative equity. And I don't think, I mean, if the interest rates go up quickly, and even if the house prices drop a little bit, uh, I don't think we'll go below, well, I don't think any of these people will be underwater. Very few people would be underwater. You need a large sum of people to go underwater on crazy mortgage products. That's what happened last time. I don't think we're in that type of scenario there. I don't think we're in that type of situation. My response here was, uh, yes, I agree. Debt and energy crisis means a bear market in bonds and stocks. Energy will destroy the economy because it has to balance the energy markets. If you have a shortage of energy, you can't, it will literally destroy things in the real economy. It will, it will collapse things. Why? Because you don't have the energy to, to build it. You can't build out with no energy. Energy is the lifeblood of absolutely everything. The GDP is just a conversion of energy. You either 
get commodities out of the ground, which takes energy, or you convert those commodities into usable products. It takes energy. It's all energy. So you could basically chart your energy shortage or consumption, and it would directly relate to GDP. Another ratio. I'm saying the ratio because we had another clip where someone said ratios were whack. So what the, the thesis, to, if you were to outline it, you know, simply is an expansionary phase where new loans go against new homes, where you have a, a, a larger demographic coming into home buying years. They buy homes. It's liquidity into the system. That liquidity in the system impacts uh, interest rates because it's inflationary. Interest rates go up and money starts to flow differently within that system. <clears throat> We had a 40-year bear market in interest rates from 1980 till about today. And that 40-year bear market was great for stocks. Stocks went up under that time frame. Why? Because the interest rates going down forced money to go into stocks because you get no return in bonds. And commodities are out of favor because we're not in that type of environment. So the environment, the market conditions, priced, priced stocks to the highest, one of the highest levels it's ever been in the early 2000s and then uh, today. Now, as things are rotating and interest rates are going up, uh, things are rotating around. Money's selling out of stocks and bonds and going into other things. That bull market could be done for a while. Now, the thesis of, of liquidity coming into the system <clears throat> from the housing market can slow down. And maybe 18 months from now, it slows way down. That could be a possibility given where the interest rates are going. And interest rates have gone up astronomically high in relationship to where we were in the beginning. It will have an impact. It will slow it down. And we have to find out by looking at the data how much it slows down and the rate of, of it slowing down. Then 18 months, because remember, the M, that'll impact the M2 money supply. The inflation is how much money's in the system already. And that usually takes about 18 months to get into the system on average, 12 to 24 months, somewhere around there. But there's another problem. The energy crisis will continue to rotate money around differently because of the energy crisis. And if you're short energy, uh, what happens is it's your, it's your debt. Money is debt. It's your debt in relationship to how many products and go of goods and services are being produced. And if you have an energy crisis, you can't produce as many goods and services uh, it also is a transfer mechanism of the money that's in the system and rotating around. It's a, it's a transfer mechanism into the consumer price index. I don't know how they're going to stop this. And inflation will remain so long that oil is basically going up in, in price. I don't see how oil is going to go down in the next four or five years. It's a, it's a multi-year bull market in oil. And that's why if you look at some like Jeff Curry thinks that we're in a super cycle. And all of the solutions are going to be in, in, insanely commodity intensive, uh, mineral intensive. Uh, electric vehicles are six times more mineral intensive than their internal combustion engine counterpart. Then you've got renewables, which are far more mineral intensive, 18 times more mineral intensive than uranium. And that's why I think uranium is going to be an incredibly good investment. Because if we hit mineral problems, if we hit mineral shortages, if, if something happens there and we're in an energy crisis already, why would you deploy? Remember, the minerals are going down in ore grades. The ore grades are declining. And, and the, if you're looking at these minerals and you have to suck out all this, you know, a whole bunch more minerals for the energy. So your, your energy return per mineral density, another ratio. <laughs> Uh, so your energy return versus mineral consumption uh, takes a lot more energy. Your energy return on energy invested would be lower in that type of scenario. Why would anyone try to implement a whole bunch of renewables when it's going to be a lot less return on energy during an energy crisis? They're not going to. What, the, what you'd want to do is you want high energy return on investment with low mineral consumption. Perfect. Nuclear wins. Uranium wins. Then you're going to have a shortage of uranium. So, it, I mean, that's the whole thesis of all this. And energy, oil, oil is going to be the driver of it. Oil and natural gas and coal. Uh, because there's, there's investments that aren't going there. Those are the high energy return on investments. Those are the things that are required for a, comp a complex society. And 
if you if you choke that, you choke the entire economy. It will then be a bear market. But it's being driven by energy. It's being and it's going to be inflationary because it's all energy driven. That is the inflationary component. And even if you choke the 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 liquidity coming into the system, I still think it might be inflationary given the crisis that we have in fossil fuels. And renewables, they may work, they may be cheaper if you were to say, okay, how much does it cost to generate electricity? But there's a whole bunch of things that are out of out of technology and humans control, which is the weather. Sometimes the wind doesn't blow, sometimes the sun isn't out. It's covered by clouds, uh, it's nighttime. There's a lot of things that can be weather driven that are outside of the technical you know, capability of, of humans. We can't change the weather per se. We can't change if it's summer versus winter. And we don't have any great way of storing electricity. And again, if we do batteries, then it just means that it's more mineral. More minerals in an energy crisis, which are very energy intense to get. The intensity. So I'm just trying to kind of sum this all up. The the thesis is correct whether um, house prices go up and down. It just means that we're in a different portion of the of the cycle. We have to monitor that. But yes, energy we're, is in a crisis and it's going to, I think, have to destroy the economy to balance everything out. It's going to be interesting to see how currencies uh, handle this. I don't think they will. I think we're going to probably hit some sort of currency problem. Because debt is going to be a problem. And if, and if we're in a highly inflationary environment, interest rates are going to want to go up. And if interest rates go up, what happens? You can't repay the debt. They're just going to have to print money to pay the interest payments on the debt. And then you get into a crisis scenario because they're going to have to print more money to hold the interest rates down in order to afford the debt, which is then inflationary as well. And then you get in this cycle. So I, we'll see what happens, guys. I'll, I'll watch it with everybody. If you guys are interested in watching it with me, definitely join the, uh, the channel here. Subscribe to the channel. Give me a thumb up for the content. Join the website below if you guys uh, agree with my reasoning here or, or do you want to learn more about financial education type stuff. I have it, a lot of this stuff on uh, the website. Become a Platinum member. Join the question and answer sessions these, you know, on the weekends. Ask these questions. But uh, yeah, I think she's right. Anyway, uh, we'll catch you next time. This is Finding Value.